It's an all too familiar story, tearing apart communities and devastating families. Mass shootings, 130 in this year alone, including the rampage at a Christian school in Nashville, leaving six victims dead, including three nine-year-olds. But on Capitol Hill, little has changed. So why not limit the to AR-15s? Why not, why not put a ban on that? If you're going to talk about the AR-15, you're talking politics now. Let's not get into politics. All right, let's not get into emotion because emotion feels good, but emotion doesn't solve problems. Sounds like they got a legit active shooter in the school. An AR-15 was one of the weapons possessed by the killer during Monday's massacre. It has been frequently used in mass shootings following the 2004 expiration of the assault weapons ban. But President Biden lacks the support from Republicans who control the House and can block legislation in the Senate. They argue such a ban is ineffective and infringes on constitutional rights. Why not take action to ban AR-15s in the aftermath of all these terrible shootings? Because I believe in the Second Amendment, and uh, we shouldn't, uh, you know, we shouldn't uh, penalize law-abiding uh, American citizens. The senator from Tennessee also declining to embrace further restrictions. What about banning those weapons that were used in attacks like these? I, I'm certain that, that politics will wave into everything, but right now I'm not focused on the politics of the situation. I'm focused on the families. Even Andy Ogles, whose district includes the Covenant School in Nashville, is a longtime supporter of access to high-powered weapons. Why not ban AR-15s? Why not talk about the real issue facing this country in regards to the shooting, which would be mental health? But Congress did take steps to address mental health when it passed the most ambitious gun law in a generation just last year. Now even GOP supporters of that law are skeptical of any more Hill action. At, at the end of the day, I, I don't know if there's much space to do more, but I'll certainly look and see. But with mass shootings up sharply in the last few years, Democrats say that it's time to force a vote. We need a fight in Congress, and I'm prepared to conduct that fight. Others are as well. It's a fight Republicans are willing to have. Why are you opposed to reinstating this ban? Well, I mean, and a lot of people use ARs and AKs for sporting purposes. I've fired both of those things, um, so both of those firearms for sporting purposes. So, But listen, let's stay focused on the issue at hand, which isn't some generic question about guns. It's what happened to these children in this school by this shooter. Number two, Senate Republican John Thune about this issue. Also, given that there have been 130 mass shootings in just this year alone, whether any action is needed legislatively, he said it's, quote, premature. And also the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, for the last two days has not answered questions about this issue. I just tried to ask him about this again. He would not respond to any questions about whether action should be taken here. But McCarthy, would, along with the rest of his House Republican leadership team, voted against that bipartisan safety law that Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell supported just last year. Phil. Monterey on Capitol Hill, thanks so much. Now I want to bring in Congressman, Republican Congressman Ken Buck of Colorado. And Congressman, you have been very consistent in your opposition to gun control legislation. You've also been very consistent into what you believe should be the focus in, in the wake of tragedies like this, uh, primarily on the issue of, of mental health uh, and trying to address those issues. And I'm interested, given the fact that the shooter in this case uh, was seeing a doctor, due to mental health issues, uh, was still able to purchase seven guns from five shops locally and carry out uh, this crime, this murder. What do you think should have been done in this situation? What could prevent something like this? Well, in, in Colorado, uh, first of all, when, when you talk about federal action at, uh, in Congress, you're talking about a one-size-fits-all solution. Uh, we have a very diverse country. The needs for uh, uh, areas of Los Angeles are much different than the needs for r rural Colorado. So we, we have, a, we have uh, proposed and, and, and uh, state by state uh, limitations on, on gun rights. In Colorado, we have a red flag law and a mental health professional can notify law enforcement that somebody is dangerous. Um, a neighbor, uh, a relative can notify law enforcement that somebody is dangerous and law enforcement is mandated to, to move. That hasn't stopped gun violence in, in Colorado, um, and it won't. Uh, the bottom line is we have mental health issues, and we have to deal with those who, who need that, that help. 
The gun itself isn't creating the crime. The person behind the gun, and, and those people are identifiable. I've talked to, I brought school superintendents together and said, what is the solution? And they know who the dangerous uh, students are in their schools, and yet there are impediments for those school superintendents, for those school principals, to be able to take action to protect the students in those schools. But I think this kind of gets to my, my question, though, because I, was, I wasn't asking about the gun specifically here. This was an individual that had known mental health issues, was seeing a doctor for those mental health issues, and yet was able to get access to guns to use. And you're saying red flag laws in, in Colorado, you've opposed red flag laws uh, generally, particularly on a national scale in the past, wouldn't work. So it, those things don't necessarily net out. How, how, what's your answer here, then? Well, my answer is I, I don't know what the law is in Tennessee. If you're telling me there's no red flag law, there's no. Um, I don't oppose uh, red flag laws that give uh, defendants, in this case the gun owner, the right to appear in court and defend themselves. The problem with the gun, uh, the red flag law in Colorado is there is no due process. The, the the law enforcement officials are mandated to go take the guns, which is dangerous to law enforcement and and dangerous to the individual. Go and take the guns from the person. And then the person has the burden of proving their innocence. That's a problem. A, a properly uh, a defined red flag law I would be in favor of if it gave the uh, gun owner the right to defend themselves and present their argument in court. You know, the, the president has once again reiterated his call for a reinstatement of the assault weapons ban. Um, you know, back in 2020, uh, you went viral. You posted this video after a similar plea. Take a watch. A message for Joe Biden and Beto O'Rourke. If you want to take everyone's AR-15 in America, why don't you swing by my office in Washington, D.C. and start with this one. Come and take it. Look, I, I come from a place where uh, all of my friends have guns, many of them use ARs. I guess my question is, is your concern as a, as a federal official, as a lawmaker, as somebody who legislates that Something like that maybe diminishes uh, the impact of what this moment is and kind of the conversations that's happening, uh, at least if you're trying to reach a resolution on issues. Well, if Joe Biden is interested in reaching a resolution on the issue, let him deal with the southern border. We have drugs coming across the southern border. And, and this crisis, this mental health crisis that we have in this country um, has a, a direct relationship to our drug laws being loosened um, and the, the lack of funding at the state level for mental health services. So let Joe Biden deal with some of the issues that are underlying the, the, the very serious, and, and I have to tell you my heart goes out every time we have one of these uh, shootings to, to the victims and their families uh, of these shootings. But it doesn't, um, it doesn't lessen the burden that Joe Biden has in finding solutions to these problems other than just blaming the gun all the time for the problem that, that he, in part, is causing by his policies on the border. So even if I stipulate everything you said related to the president, what's the burden on you as a lawmaker in the wake of these? You noted every time one of these happens, your heart goes out, you feel awful. The fact that they happen so many times that you have to say every time, that would seem to be a pretty significant problem nationally. So what's the burden on you as a federal official, as a lawmaker, to do something about this, regardless of what you think it is, but to do something? Right. No, I, I absolutely acknowledge that. And, and my burden is to make sure I follow the Constitution and the Second Amendment protects. There are more than two million AR-15s. As you said, you have some friends with AR-15s. They're not a danger to anybody. The idea that we're going to confiscate two million weapons in this country is, is pure folly. The idea that we're going to ban a particular kind of weapon as if some other weapon won't be used. I, I can remember 20 years ago, uh, the ban was on handguns. We've got we've to gotta stop handguns from being used. And handguns kill far more people than a rifle like an AR-15. If you go to Chicago and you look at the murder rate in, in some very poor areas of Chicago, they're not using AR-15s, they're using handguns. So ultimately, we need to stop the violence by uh, making sure we take violent criminals off the streets and addressing the mental health issue that, that we face. That's my burden.